We know, uh, both of us know, that parallel computing, high performance computing, grid computing whatsoever is around for decades already. Nevertheless, your key book, also ages ago uh, as it was defined, uh, is going to, at least in my opinion, is going to change the world of software engineering. It's called the actor model. Could you probably briefly explain what the actor model is and what makes it so different to conventional parallel computing? So the actor model is an inherently parallel model of computation where computation entities are all concurrent. So they uh, uh, have their own autonomy, they have their own local state, they have their own control, and they react to the world. So this is quite analogous to biological systems or to um, social systems where you have autonomous agents. So it's a programming model that is based on the notion of parallelism at its root, where things are inherently parallel rather than the sequential von Neumann architecture roots of computing where you have one step at a time in an algorithm. So you, everything takes a step. Uh, when you remember, we have had some really interesting papers in uh, this edition of Higgs, especially also in the parallel computing track, and they all were pointing out potential problems that people can run into when they uh, are creating parallel programs. Uh, do you think that the same kind or the same set of problems can also happen with the actor model? Yeah, interestingly, these are the problems that the actor model avoids because the traditional uh, programming is based on sequential computing. Then they use things like shared variables to communicate. This causes problems of uh, ordering and synchronization. Uh, they, they, they have to then graft on uh, the interactions, and this leads to problems because you can have race conditions in your data. You can have uh, atomicity violation where things need to be atomic and so on. Uh, because these variables are being shared across different autonomous processes, it's very hard to know what somebody else might have done in the interim. So it, it requires a global view of, of the system, which is very hard for any individual uh, uh, agent to have or any individual yeah. programmer to have. And they're not extensible because the moment you add a little more parallelism, uh, another agent, another process, manipulating the same variables, you can destroy the semantics that was already there. So all of these problems uh, come from from these traditional models. Uh, I see. You, you have so nicely pointed it out that basically uh, most of the parallel approaches that we find out there is kind of an extension to classical sequential programming. So there was kind of an evolvement. People took several uh, sequential programs and then they turned them parallel. And they were suddenly focusing a whole set of new problems as there is deadlocks, as there is race conditions, things that are pretty hard to hunt down. Uh, and this is going to be solved by the, by the actor model. Uh, the other question is, however, and this reminds me of one of the questions that we had to face during the open forum that we had in the mini track. Uh, guys out there are actually demanding for uh, ways to create parallel programs that are simple to do, so that are not very complex, that are kind of uh, error-proof, so you can't actually do something wrong accidentally just by because something slipped your mind, you weren't aware of some implicit things that were going on behind the scenes. Uh, would you say that the actor model is actually something that could feed this demand, saying it's simpler to being applied to parallel computing? Indeed, and in fact, uh, so the big advantage is that you think in terms of the natural units of concurrency, what is uh, in your domain already parallel? So rather than thinking about things that are sequentialized by an algorithm and then proceeding to figure out how to make it parallel, you're thinking of the natural entities that are inherently parallel. And in fact, this has been the experience of programmers in the real world. Um, so, thing, uh, so systems like Twitter and LinkedIn and uh, Facebook chat system, they have been written in actor languages. And not only have they been written in actor languages, uh, the creators of these systems have pointed out that the reason they used an actor language is because it made the problem of concurrency, uh, the problem of having things in parallel and interacting a whole lot simpler. And that's why we find these systems are relatively robust compared mm -hmm. to the usual parallel programs, and they're able to service hundreds of millions of users 
I see. So we see practitioners out there, they are actually right. using it, those who are really facing demands of high performance. In, so and in fact, the Orleans uh, project at Microsoft now is uh, being deployed on the on the Microsoft Cloud and uh, pr providing large number of services, including their games with millions of users. So we see there is, after, after so many years, there is actually a technology that's emerging into the market. Uh, personally, I think it's a really great idea. The other way, we have just talked about that there is practitioners that are actually applying the actor model to their problems, and you have named really prominent sites like Twitter and so on. Uh, what is your experience when we come to another field that's really important when we want to make it a really widespread idea, which is education? Uh, do you have any background whether actor-based systems by now already play some central role in computer science education? Yeah, so education, ironically, is much slower to move forward than other <laughs> yeah, sectors. Yeah, I uh, see. <laughs> um, in fact, yeah, that, that is a surprise, but it, in computer science, especially because uh, uh, you know the research can be cutting edge and so on, but uh, when it comes to education. Mm -hmm. It has strong roots and it has to displace things, and the uh, the faculty have to learn new uh, new ways of doing things. And uh, in fact, the the reality is that there is a lot of research being done in the older systems because it's rich in problems, because the uh, programming has a lot of defects. It generates a lot of papers on how to prevent race conditions where different processes are trying to access the same variable and write to it and read from it and so on. And these are problems that go away in the actor systems. Of course, yeah. there are new problems created, but because the older set of problems is well understood and because there is no good solution, but rather many proposals, uh, even the academic research, uh, th these things have dominated in, in some of the major conferences. Um, on the other, so so I think uh, on, uh, wh while the model is simpler, and now we have seen efforts where the students themselves enjoy learning about actors. So you have some experience in this I regard. Um, Fortunately, I've speak to got the chance here. Yeah. Right, and and I have heard the same thing from other people that uh, places uh, like Rice University and um, uh, Maryland and other colleagues yeah. where they have taught courses on parallel programming or introduced actors. It has been the most intuitive notion for students, but perhaps you can say something about uh, yeah. since you recently. Yeah, of course, got, but, uh, but but before I'm talking about my own experience uh, experience in applying uh, actor based system in the education of computer science, which is thoroughly positive. I'd like to comment on your notes because you said so the uh, academic community apparently prefers to find remedies for problems that would not exist without active <laughs> systems and they are focusing on that and this reminds me of the uh, keynote address that we had uh, yesterday here at Higgs. It was about disruptive technologies and I would rather call this actor based uh, actor model approach a disruptive technology that, that actually solves a lot of things but requires a different uh, mindset, a, a different viewpoint and a different way of thinking. But once you are into it, it's probably the most intuitive thing. So uh, that's what I personally like so much. And you've already mentioned it, so I've tried to integrate actor-based systems in one of my seminars. And uh, it w it's a really vivid uh, lecture uh, that's basically run by students. So students, they got assignments where they need to prepare uh, lectures on particular topics, and one of them was actor-based systems. and Students really like that, so they're probably not that, that biased as the academic community. They are always open for new ideas, for new approaches, and I've seen this by just discussing at the end of the lecture and pointing out different scenarios where we could also apply the actor model. Uh, I could prove and I could feel that they have actually got the message, so they have understood it. So I'm completely on par with you saying that this is a solution to most of the problems that are so <laughs> widely discussed, as you have mentioned before, uh, and it's actually very straightforward. Uh, probably coming back, what, what is the perception in the industry? So you have much more insight in the industry. Do they perceive it the same way, that it's actually easier to do things following the actor-based model? Uh, yeah, the most successful systems, uh, as I mentioned, have been written in actor languages, and they attribute the success or, or actor frameworks 
and they attribute the success but to these. But did people um, complain about they were forced to do it in the actor way? Uh, no, they, they were, in fact, they said they, they liked features of many other languages and uh, uh, were personally fond of them, but when it came to concurrent programming and scaling, they were quite um, pleased with being able to use an actor language because concurrency is at the root of these languages. And so, in a sense, this has been realized by the successful systems. Now, um, many projects, of course, fail, and possibly man many of them did not use actors, and that might have been the root that of their problem. That might be uh, the problem. root, yeah. <laughs> Probably you're right on this one. Uh, but, Gul, uh, another question. So, we have talked about lots about the past, also about the present, but let's talk a bit about the future. So, uh, the both of us are pretty much convinced that in the future actor-based models, they are going to play a central role in software engineering. So more and more systems, I'm pretty much convinced, will move over to the actor-based paradigm, a completely different architectural approach. Uh, but as we all know, next year is going to be kind of special. It's right. the 50th uh, Higgs conference, so there's 50 years of this conference, there's 50 year of software technology, which is completely your field. Uh, and the question is, what are your expectations to see for the next upcoming Higgs in the context of parallel computing, actor-based system, similar ideas, probably other languages or so on? What are your personal expectations towards this? So, so it's an exciting time for, for Higgs. It's, uh, as you mentioned, been around for 50 years. And uh, in, in the 90s, it, it actually had some uh, uh, attention. It, it had a good coverage of parallel and distributed uh, computing, uh, special issues in sections, in, in computer, in, uh, in other places. In fact, I gave a, a software keynote lecture here back in the early 90s. Uh, at cool. the cutting edge. And uh, again, now that this uh, technology has become more ubiquitous and more, and the in interest in Internet of Things has grown, uh, there's a great deal of interest in cloud computing and Internet of Things and parallel parallelism from multi-core on to sensor networks. And so it's a great time actually to see uh, mini tracks flourish in uh, new trends in parallel computing, education and research, and so I'm, I'm uh, uh, expecting and hoping to see a renaissance in this area again uh, because Hicks is a premier forum for applied technology and so this will fit very well with that mission. Mm -hmm.